take one, aka re-tuing review. First we'll start off with some prongles. Maybe not. There it goes. Let's get a fistful of prongle. Scissor Bay take one. Woo! Good to be back, baby. Here we are, back in the figure reviewing game. And of course, let me give a big shout out to everyone who participated in my poll on uh, or my Discord and Instagram to choose who I review next out of, I think I believe I had five figures waiting to be reviewed and this lucky girl right here was chosen first by you. And of course, if you'd like to participate in any other polls, or maybe I'll be doing another one of these drafts again, uh, hop on over to my Discord and or check out my Instagram and or Twitter. Well, let's get right into it. Who did we pick out of all the figures that I wanted to review? None other than AKA re made by Magic Mold. That's her name, AKA re colon two, the number two, ing, I-N-G. That name is way too confusing, so uh, during my unboxing stream we aforementionedly named her Scissor Bay, which is much better, so from now on I'll be just be calling her Scissor Bay, because that's what she is. Why? Because she has a really big pair of scissors. Bigger than these. She has scissors. I do too. I don't want to dilly-dally any longer or waste some time, so let's go ahead and get in here into some of my stream highlights of unboxing this figure. That's right, I have clips. I have highlights. These are actually real barber scissors. Zenny, fun fact, is my grandfather. Old Gramps used to be a barber. And these are his barber scissors from his shop a long time ago. Cue the highlights so I can eat another Pringle real quick. See this bubble wrap? I'm gonna do the table trick where you slide the cloth off real fast. This is a big box, dude. A honker of a box. What do I call her? Retooing? Is that her name? We got Scissor Bay now. Can you want me to cut the figure in half with these scissors? This is some big. Look at these. They don't move though. This is literally like that fake plastic plating that's just gonna. Scream. I'm gonna put the chair on and just go. It's gonna go like a chalkboard. Nice and loud plastic cracking. There she is. Let's spin her around so y'all can see. This is a really cool design, dude. Let's get the chair out. The chair was cool. Like, there's a lot of little tiny intricate details. Wasn't that fun? So I'm sure I'll have a lot to say once we start the review. So let's go ahead while we're here and start the details. Or go, start the details. Start the review and go over the details. Here she is, my first original character. There's always, of course, a little apprehension when buying a figure of a character you have basically no emotional attachment to. What? Ah, hell, who am I kidding? All that really matters is does it look cool? Honestly, that's the only reason you need when buying a figure. AKA re which I'm sure has got to be a play on words or something that I'm just too dumb to understand. I kind of sum this figure up as a modern take like on those dramatic remake movies of fairy tales. Like the actual Red Riding Hood movie, which I had no idea existed. Or Snow White and the Huntsman. Wait, how the hell did they make a sequel to that? I want to know where Dopey's at. Where's Sweaty? Where's my boy Sweaty? At least that's the vibe I'm getting from her. But, uh, more anime, though. And, uh, fan service -y. I actually had no idea that she was even supposed to be from LRH when I pre-ordered her. I just thought it was some chick in a red coat. But the Wolf Hunter decal on her back kind of gave it away. Shut up. I just thought the scissors were really cool. And let's kick off this review and go over the details. But wait, what what does scissors even have to do with Little Red Riding Hood? I don't... Oh. Oh, no. Wait, hell no. These stories are supposed to be for children? Some sick people out there. That's sick stuff. I wonder what's inside. Scissor me. The designer slash illustrator Neko strikes again with another straight banger of a figure. 
And if you've been collecting figmas for a while, then I'm sure you already stumbled upon his work before. The Heavily Armed High School Girls is his biggest series, with a good selection of big sword swinging ladies to choose from. Even some of his other designs got picked up, like the A through Z series, then a few standalone characters. Apparently, he's in the drawing Sick Female Assassins. I really want to pick this one up. But today's heroine falls under the standalone category. Let's take a little off the top and go in for a closer look at her. Well, actually the bright red hooded cape mostly gave it away. Yeah, I'm an idiot. A little cluster of pins decorates her hood. Ah, she literally has a pin with scissors on it that says red. The coat is a thicker waterproof material that loosely hangs down, crinkling from its dense weight. Her badge is on the front with a scarf attachment buttoned around her neck. Looks like she's part of the Hunter's Guild, which I'd like to imagine as a squad of wolf hunters at Rome's forests fighting big bad wolves dressed as grandmothers. Her hair seems to be a faded pink, which was once blonde, but the dye is starting to fade away. Especially on the top. Strands tangle and clump over her eyes, as the rest is neatly braided and tied up with a black ribbon. Those eyebrows, lashes, and just straight up eyes are all pinked out as well. I like how the long upper lashes cast a shadow on the whole iris itself. She gracefully balances on the edge of her bronze chair, confidently grinning as she tilts back, dangling her leg down. Oh, I almost forgot the headphones hiding under her hood. Yo, are those beats? I wonder what she listens to while slaying beasts. I can't tell if the letters are supposed to be IW or IM. There's like that little line up there, do you see it? I think she has them set the wumbo though. I don't know what the hell is going on underneath her coat, but her fit is, or their lack of, pretty wild. An unzipped hoodie, bikini, and black pumpsuit. I'm not going to take a deep dive into this guy's fetish for exposing midriff in his designs, but the homeboy here, well, he went full force on this one. Hey, she's pretty toned though. <laughs> she works out. Hey, look, she even has little scissors in her utility belt. The gloves are sick, those boots need to be zipped up, and the sport socks are sporty spice. Yo! Hey, let's talk about setting her up though. Like balancing that chair and putting those snippers in her hand, my god. Which was no simple task at all. While prognosing how to attach everything, I even had the chat losing their minds. The manual! No, stop! You are killing me right now! I'm ripping my skin off! Oh my god! I'm leaving. I'm Open freaking out. the scissors! Out. Don't let them sit like that! I'm thoroughly triggered. Seriously, it's going to break! This is fun. This is some fun stuff here, everybody. That doesn't even... Is there, oh, there's probably, I should probably read the instructions, huh? Well, so this goes like that. Ugh. Ugh. Easy. But we'll further discuss that in the next half of this review. You can skip reading the instructions, I'll walk you through it. So, for simplicity's sake, start by placing your buttholes and palm on the chair. Then delicately and precisely start pegging in her chair and blades. First pop the legs of the chair and the square pegs on the base. The chair will balance backwards, then place the little plastic stand under her foot to securely balance her. Next, the tip of the skizzers drops into the little slot. There is a hole on the side of the blade that pegs into the side of the chair. Pop that in, then it should align to her hand. Repopping the scissors after they come loose. Then after about 10 minutes of hassle, you should have yourself a fully seated 1 7th scale figure of AKA re -tooing. Clip the mic. Hey, let's hit him with the size comparison, boys. She ain't doing no arts and crafts with those things. Let's go over what I both like and dislike about Little Red here. Wow, I can't believe I'm looking at scissor memes right now, which is a route I never would have imagined taking in my life. Did I make the right choice on making her my first OC? Or did she not make the cut? Let's find out and start with what I liked about Little Miss Scissor Bay. First up is that lavish chair and pair of scissors. As something more of a set piece, just meant to be an object she sits on, shits on. Man, did they do more work than they really needed to do on them. Oh la la! Oh well. King in the castle, king in the castle. Have a chair, I have a chair. Oh, go do this, go do this, king in the castle. First is that flower in the middle of the backrest that she stopped to pick while on her way to her grandmammy's house. The twisted thorny accents branching out along the fancy rails are just pure awesome, dude. And the little accents on the legs give it like a 17th century European look, while the glossy antique bronze color gives it a nice shiny metallic sheen. 
Those sure ain't safety scissors though, because boy, do they look dangerous. The extra trim along the edges and pointy spikes sticking out from the ends make them look menacing. The way the color gradients from black to bronze down to a deep burgundy at the ends of the blades, it makes them look, well, used. Sick people! Next is her little red cape. Obviously the bright red is a huge standout and really draws your eyes towards her. The way it hangs off her arm and drapes over her other hand gives it a more natural feel. I also dig the little drawstrings with knots on them. Good job, Magic Mold. Now she's part of the chair gang, boy! Duh! Haru would have been part of this gang too, but I didn't buy the DX version of her. I like the look on her face. It's almost curious, kinda like how she was in the story. That wolf is one sussy baka. <laughs> can't believe I said that. The wolf hunter decal on her back adds some lore to this character. Maybe she's from Hunter Hunter. Oh my god, they spelt association wrong. They spelt this. Oh, oh my, my god! Ah, gripes! A so see a shin. Wow. They did not really have quality control. Missed that? Oh my god. It's like the, the hammer at my work on the back of it. It said, wear safety googles instead of goggles on it. Which is the funniest thing ever. Anyways, uh, the, the next gripe is the foot stand. It's completely optional, which is nice. Except it doesn't really work that well because there's no designated spot for it to grab hold of anything. It just awkwardly sits there. I do obviously recommend using it when shelving her, and you can slide it out for when taking pictures. Which, uh, thinking about it, is actually a great idea. Because some of those poles that they put to hold up figures just stand out like a sore thumb, and it would be cool to at least have the option to remove the pole just for taking pictures and showing it off. Then just pop it back on when you're done. Okay, last up is my dislikes. And this one is a huge no-brainer. I don't think anyone that owns Scissor Bay likes this absolute goliath of a base. <laughs> this was the first thing I noticed and almost took like offense to when first unboxing what it. What the hell, man? I don't have room for this. <laughs> it's something you do drugs off of. I, I've seen this in that uh, Johnny Depp movie. Good luck not smudging, scraping, or scratching it. Look how scratched that base is. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> See, it looks like even the people that made her had a hard time putting her on her base. Oh, and uh, also, good luck even finding a spot on your shelf for her. I actually have to stack some of my other figures on the base to make room right now. I'm not too proud of it. Next, her hair. It's a bit drab. Well, that's an understatement. It's totally dry. The color doesn't stand out at all. It's extremely flat. It could definitely use some shine to it, or at least, like, some shading. The way her hair splits from the braids is actually kind of cool, though. Actually, her face could use more color as well. With the eyes hiding underneath her hair, I think some, like, gloss could make them pop a little more. And her mouth needs some, like, extra texture or shading to it as well. It's just kind of, like, open with nothing there. She bites, though. She does bite. Be careful, though. The shears and chair are very, very thin and wobbly. They feel like they can just snap with the slightest breeze. Let's go ahead and cut to my final dislike. Setting her up, 0 out of 10. But for as many times as everything blew apart and I dropped her onto my floor while filming this, uh, nothing broke, or nothing like snapped off or popped off, so uh, either the stuff's not as flimsy as it looks, or I just got extremely lucky. What do you think? Do you think she gives good haircuts like my boy Edward Scissorfingers does? Anyways, now we can snip on over to my ratings and see if she takes the dub or ends up on the cutting room floor. Anybody want to play Busy Scissors for the Nintendo Wii with me? No? Let's cut to the chase! What I do here is split this figure up into three different categories, tailing up all the points for a final 0 out of 5 star rating. Starting with the first category, of course, photographability. The sheer amount of swag Scissor Bay flaunts is enough to drop a horse. She sits perched on her chair ever so gently, caressing the handle with her fingers as she tilts back using the very edge of the blade for balance. The way she rests her heel up against the rail definitely screams overly confident anime protagonist stereotype. All the minor details are great, like the random numbers on her socks and the unzipped boots with the fancy zippers dangling down to the little fasteners on her coat and even her gloves. It's like finding the bonus fries at the bottom of the bag. I gotta admit though, it was kind of hard taking actual pictures of her with my camera. There's a lot of angles and dynamics going on, man. 
The scissors and chair are hard to get cool up close shots of, and getting the whole ass basin for reference kind of almost drowns her out. Next category up is quality. Word on the street was her hair was supposed to be sloppily painted on where her braids are at, but I think mine turned out all, well, all right for what it is. Nothing too noticeably horrendous. The coat, boots, and belts are probably the best looking things on her paint-wise, especially the coat. I think she definitely could have used some shading on her hair and even some skin pigment on her pale legs, kind of like what was done with my Tai Takemi figure for a more lifelike look. Everything at least looks uniform though. She feels nicely weighted and solid. I wish the chair and clippers could have at least had some more like stiffer spots on it like on the legs and fasteners just for some support. Because setting her up is like a Indiana Jones scene. I'm just sitting there wiping sweat from my head. Oh, it's such a headache setting her up. Okay, the last category is a match of rock, paper, scissors. Winner takes all, sudden death. Let's do it. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Ah! Scissor Bay trims her way into my heart and scores a 3.8 out of 5 big snips, baby. Why does everyone use scissors as weapons in anime? Wait, this one doesn't even have scissors in it! Even horror movies, of course. Final thoughts. Love the concept, hate the price tag. I do recommend her because it supports an awesome artist. And she's a really unique figure to have in your collection. That's if you can fit it into your collection. The base, oh, did I mention the base is a cool 10 and a half inches wide, by the way. Hey, uh, if you can't afford her, get the Miku. That's, that's actually pretty adorable. Oh, <laughs> what the hell is this? Who drew this? <laughs> Look at this. He got his tongue sticking out. Why did I save this? Why is this on my computer? Well, that wraps up the review, everyone. I hope you had a good time watching and hanging out with me today. That was a lot of fun. It's good to be back reviewing figures again. I have a ton more to do. So if you have any questions or just like to nerd out with me, hop over onto the Discord. And if you enjoy the videos and content that I'm making and would like to help support the channel and maybe want to pick yourself up a figure of your own, you can use my Hobby Link Japan affiliate link and order anything that you'd like off the site, and I get a little commission from that. It's a really cool thing to do. So, as I always say, much love, you're the best. Thank you for stopping by. I hope to see you next time around. And end it.